morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Calvary Children's Church. Uh, today, what I want to talk about is more about the Holy Spirit. Now, last week, we talked about how the Holy Spirit uh, came upon the disciples. It gave them tremendous courage, tremendous joy. They were speaking in different languages, the languages of all the people around the land that were in Jerusalem. And it was just, it was a fantastic time. And God started growing the church. 3,000 people gave their hearts to Jesus. And it was all because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Now today what I want to talk a little bit about is how we, through the Spirit, can grow and how, uh, how we can do that. Now, gr when we talk about growing, it kind of reminds me of this plant over here. So here's a plant. And you can see it's nice and green and it's growing. Now, for plants to grow, there's certain things that they need, right? They need water, they need good soil, and they need sunlight. Now, it reminds me of us as Christians. When we give our hearts to Jesus, when we're new Christians, there's things we need. For example, like water could be almost like the Holy Spirit, the, the living water. When God pours His Spirit out on us, we grow. Soil reminds me of the Bible, and if we have a strong foundation in God's Word, we can grow our roots, go deep into God's Word. And the third thing is like the sun, which reminds me of uh, just spending time in God's presence in prayer. And all those things are ways that we grow as Christians. Now, as we grow, something happens in our lives. Our lives start to bear fruit, and God wants us to bear fruit and be fruitful. Did someone I, mention fruit? Yes, I, I, I did. Hi, Jasmine. How are you doing? Yeah, I did mention fruit. What's, what's going on today? Well, I'm okay, I guess. When well, you don't sound very okay, what's, what's bothering you? Jasmine, well, what's wrong? Well, I planted a garden in my yard this oh, year. Oh, that's great. I love gardening. That's one of my favorite things. Now, did you do regular beds or raised beds? Um, uh, what's the one where it's a square of dirt on the ground? Well, that's a, that's a regular garden bed. Now, did you compost, use topsoil, or manure? Ew, manure? Uh, ugh. I just used regular dirt, I guess. Well, that's good. Dirt, regular dirt's okay. Now, manure is not quite as bad as people think. The plants actually really love it, and it's not quite as stinky as people think. But anyway, uh, I have a joke for you. What You know, what, chicken, what do chickens grow on? Um... Don't they grow in, like, nests or a, a coop? No! Eggplants! Get it? <laughs> Eggplants! Yeah! Uh, no, that's, you're, that's you're not, I'm, I'm sorry, I guess I got a little carried away. You're, you're really having trouble. What, so so, so what's, what's going on? Tell me what's wrong in your garden. Well, I'm trying to grow watermelon. Watermelon, yeah, they can be kind of tricky. I've been very frustrated trying to grow watermelon before. Well, I've gotten a few of them to grow but I can't get them big enough to eat. Just look at this one. Oh yeah, that's just kind of that's kind of small there. Yeah, I, small yeah. one. I picked this three days ago, <laughs> and I've given it plenty of sunlight and water in my room, and it hasn't grown at all. Wow. Well, Jasmine, you, you know, I kind of think I know what the problem is. And that's not all. The other one I picked two weeks ago, and it hasn't gotten any bigger. And it's all rotten and squishy. Yeah, well, I, I bet, yeah, that makes sense. Now, the thing is, Jasmine, fruit doesn't grow once you've picked it from the plant or the vine. It doesn't? No, it's all done growing once you picked it. See, this has to stay connected to the vine. Oh, I've been doing it all wrong. Well, that's okay. That happens a lot in gardening. We make mistakes, but... I think the next one, you should keep it connected to the plant and see how nice and big it gets before you pick it. I'm glad I didn't pick the third one yet. Oh, you have another one? Oh, that's good, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go water it now, and I'll make sure it stays on the vine. Now, that's more like it. Now, in no time, you'll be eating a nice, juicy slice of watermelon before you know it. So good luck with that. Thanks, Mr. Justin. Oh, you're welcome. Have a great day. So, as I was saying, fruit. God wants our lives to bear fruit. And one of the ways we bear fruit is by staying connected to Christ, to stay connected to Jesus. And then His Spirit 
will work in our lives to help us bear fruit. And there's a really cool verse that I want to share with you today. It comes from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. And it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. God's Spirit can bring fruit in our lives. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Those are the fruits of the Spirit. So let's talk about each one of those fruits. Now the Holy Spirit produces these fruits in our lives. So let's talk about them. The first fruit of the Spirit I want to talk about is joy. Now, I'm sorry, love. <laughs> the first fruit I'm talking about is love. What is love? Now love is something very important that God can do in our hearts. Love is thinking of others before ourselves. Love is putting others first. Love is, you know, helping out around the house. All right, it's not just a feeling, it's, it's a choice. We choose to love others. And the Bible says that the, the greatest gift of all is, is love and that people will know we are Christians by our love. A another fruit of the Spirit is joy. Now, what is joy? Now, this tree here represents our lives and God can produce this fruit. Now, what is joy? Now, joy is not just being, you know, happy all the time. But joy is even when things are going kind of rough, that we can still praise God and we know that He's with us and we can rejoice in God no matter what's going on. Another fruit of the Spirit is peace. Peace. Now, what is peace? Now, peace is, you know, kind of like a calmness in our lives. Being calm and, and knowing that God is going to take care of us even when we worry. We might be worried. Maybe mom or dad's out out you know driving around we're just worried maybe they won't come home maybe, maybe you know we might be fearful but that peace is you know God's spirit working in us to show us that we don't have to worry God is taking care of it so we have love joy peace how about patience what is patience patience all right that's a tough one patience is waiting your turn being able to wait until it's your turn and not get uh, frustrated or mad at somebody who, who's taking their turn. Um, so we have love, joy, peace, patience. We have goodness. What is, what is goodness? Okay. Now, when I think of goodness, I kind of think of being able to obey your parents, being, being a good boy or girl at home, being able to follow directions to mom and dad. is very important these days. We're all at home. Um, so goodness kindness what's kindness you know doing nice things for other people these are things God is gonna work in our lives well faithfulness what is faithfulness now faithfulness is doing what you promise if you promise you're gonna do something you should do it that honors God uh, doing your chores without being asked that's part of being faithful okay so God those are the fruits that God wants to work how about gentleness what is gentleness? Now, taking care of your things, you know, treating them nicely, taking care of other people's feelings, uh, you know, being nice to them, not being mean to them, that's, that's kind of like being gentle. And finally, the last one, self-control. What does that mean? Well, self-control is being able to control yourself, maybe when you're feeling hyper or, you know, just really just, you know, out of control, maybe angry. So being able to you know, have a calm spirit, have, being able to be self-controlled. Now, these are the nine fruits of the Spirit. Let's read them again. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, these are, these are the fruits of the Spirit that God wants to work in our lives. Now, how many of you ever have gone out to a fruit tree and looked up at that fruit tree and saw the fruit you know, straining and struggling and saying, oh, I'm going to be a fruit, I'm going to be a fruit, I'm going to try really hard, I'm just going to grow and I'm going to be a fruit. Have anybody ever, have you ever seen that? No, see, fruit don't have to try and struggle to become fruit. All they have to do is stay connected to the vine. Now, the tree is kind of like it represents, you know, the life-giving, 
ability of this tree gives the fruit its life. And that's kind of like with us. We have to stay connected to Christ. And if we're connected to his Holy Spirit, then he can work in us and produce this fruit. Now, God was working in the early church, as we learned last week, and many hearts were given over to Jesus, and their lives were changed. And if you want to have your life changed, you can too by asking God into your life, and the Holy Spirit can produce these fruit. It's the work of the Spirit. Now, do we have to do all these things to to go to heaven, to get to heaven? Is that how it works? We have to show gentleness, patience. If we show enough peace and kindness, God will let us into heaven. Is that how it works? No. See, these are things that God works in our lives because we are saved, because we are His, because we know Him and we draw close to Him. He, he works these things in our lives. We are saved, and because we're saved, God fills us, and he produces this fruit. Now, another th- important thing to remember is you will become the kind of people you, you hang out with. So another important thing is you want to find people in your lives, friends. You know, I know a lot of us are stuck at home, but when we get to go back to school again, we're going to be able to spend time with friends, and you should look for friends that show this kind of fruit in their lives. You, If you find people that love God and they show patience and kindness and love, those are the people you should spend your time with to become more and more uh, like Christ. This is very important. We want to become like Christ. These are the characteristics that Jesus showed when he was here and the things he wants to do in our lives. So we should spend time. That's why church is so important. And we can't wait till we come back together because these are the kinds of qualities we look for in each other and that can encourage us to follow Christ. So I want to give you a chance right now uh, to pray and we can ask for God's Holy Spirit into our lives and and to work these fruits. Remember, we're not going to try to make these fruits, but as we give our lives to Christ, he produces these fruits in us. So let's let's pray right now. We're going to thank God and ask him to bless us. So thank you Father, for your gracious gifts, thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for producing fruit in our lives, Lord. We don't have to try to produce these things. These are things you do in our lives through your Spirit. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, into our hearts and our minds that you would produce fruit like love, patience, uh, joy. Uh, Help us to be kind and good to one another. And so we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. And I pray you bless my brothers and sisters at home and just help them to have a a good day today and, and just a blessed day. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thank you for joining us today. And I hope that God starts to work and produce this kind of fruit in your life. And we'll see you back here next time. So God bless you and have a great day.